Here we have the front axle to a 1903 Ford Model A, the original Model A. A lot of people don't know that Henry actually made a full lap around the alphabet before he got to the 1928 Model A. And so uh, this is our buddy Rix. He drives it everywhere, puts tons of miles on it, and he's managed to develop a fatigue crack in the left hand front knuckle. So uh, luckily he noticed it in time. Uh, it's one of the prime reasons actually to have paint on a part. You can see the crack in the paint much quicker than you actually can the metal. You'll see here once we get this all dressed down that uh, actually you can't see the crack in the steel at all. <clears throat> but it showed up in the paint just fine. So we're just removing the grease here. I like to get all the grease off. Uh, before you grind the part so that you're not grinding grease into the part. the paint off, uh, grind it off a pretty wide area. The heat affected zone is going to be pretty wide. The, the paint's not going to be able to take that heat. So best just to get it out of the way so it doesn't turn into either some kind of runny mess or some kind of carbon. Get around into your weld. Again, it's a real fine hairline crack. Uh, without the paint, actually, you wouldn't even have detected it, I'm sure. It was actually the crack and the chipping in the paint that showed it. Just mark it again before we cut the V. Just using the cutoff wheel to cut a notch in the part to clear the crack out. Uh, especially since we want this to be an invisible repair. You're going to have to finish grind the weld and say so you can't count on any material being proud of the knuckle there. Okay, just using the angle grinder to open up the uh, groove a little wider, make it more like a 45 degree angle, uh, or, or wider I guess. The, um, you, you want the, the groove to be wide enough so that you can penetrate down in there and get a good root weld. This is going to take several passes, especially since we want to be able to finish grind the weld and have it invisible. So you can't weld something this deep without opening it up. If you just were to lay a weld on top, you'd be kidding yourself. Uh, probably break again pretty quick. Uh, that's my five gallon doer of paint thinner. I use the automotive, you know, auto body paint thinner. Uh, not the clean up thinner, the crappy stuff in the red gallon cans, but you know, the good, good stuff. Uh, a lot of people use acetone. Um, I found thinner is good enough and isn't so hard on your hands smells better. Uh, if you need something more than that, you probably have a bigger problem. Okay, then we start up the welder. Um, it's a Miller Dynasty 200. It's a great little machine. Uh, I set it to 100 amps initially, but I actually ended up going up to 140, 160. So you can see I have the TIG cable wrapped around my neck so the tension doesn't weight down my arm. Uh, that's my favorite way. So I bring the cable from the right. I'm left-handed, so pull the torch on the left. Um, get comfortable. Is, you know that's the the mantra for TIG welding. So have your rest for your hands and 
get a good position, practice it before you do it. You'll probably see I'm a bit of a Miller fanboy. Um, just love their products from start to finish. You're ready to just do the finishing passes here. Um, when you weld something this thick, you're going to get a little bit of undercutting at the edges of the weld, and then when you grind it flush, you know it's going to show up as kind of they're almost going to look like cracks themselves. So you got to run a couple more beads down the sides there, at lower amperage, so you have some material there to feather out. Our finished part, all ground down, ready to be repainted and reinstalled. Um, tried to keep it as minimally invasive as possible, so I have to keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't grow back, but it should be ready for another hundred years of service.